Hello and welcome to another game pro review on the Frikaiu Gameplay Channel. And in this one, we have XPX TN on Hecarim, the buffed Hecarim, the juicy Hecarim. The W is up more often, Hecarim. And, uh, well, that was a little guttural at the beginning. I just finished my, uh, my, my nice sippy cup post weights. Uh, we're going to James Bond tonight. Just released the main video channel, but I had to stop to bring you this game because it's been a while since we've had Hecarim. And honestly, I was looking at the World's Boot Campus to see. What kind of particular picks are they pulling out? And the Lily is looking spicy. The uh, the Kha'Zix is looking okay. And suddenly this Hecarim catches my going, okay, this is something we can look at. And fortunately for us, it's not a straight shoot Divine Sundra Yorm build. It's very much a Triforce build, raiding right against the squishy targets. And we have a Soraka Pike bottom lane, which... <laughs> yeah, we have a Soraka Pike bottom lane, which means you don't have that long range damage for tower taking and objective secures. So it does fall to you heavily as well as the Rise and the Gwen. Which, I mean, you have enough damage and you just have to get them low enough. Uh, Dana moves from the bottom side. We have a Rise. We've got the Graves top lane abuser. Graves is just so good overall. Uh, Fleet footwork, obviously working in the jungle as well as lane. Let's see how this goes over here. This is interesting for me because Misfortune is super strong. The nice thing is though, you're against a Yumi. So, very, very important hook misses. Very, very important to note as a Hecarim player, as a jungler of any, well, any jungler, basically. Please understand that when there's a Yumi on the enemy team and you have a Pike, you have a Leona, you have a Nautilus, um, you almost have any other support, uh, your support can have Rome Prior. The Yumi will not be able to accomplish the same things by just leaving lanes and walking around and roaming. I mean, they can attach to someone from base and do stuff, but very much it's a, it's a lane of focus kind of thing. And in this case, you've got a Soraka and the Pike will still look to roam. So what happens to the Soraka will be interesting. For the Hecarim, obviously we're gonna go straight shoot full clear. We're against an Olaf who's most likely going to do the same thing. Start a blue side. We see him going down. This control wood is really nice early, obviously from the Yumi, but for a jungler, you guys can go pretty frequently control ward and pot. I do it on Orn. Uh, quite a lot, and Zyra, and, and if I can full clear or five camp before Crab with those junglers, oopsie, uh, with a control ward to protect myself against the unfortunate invades of the meta players, I uh, almost use a different word there, uh, th then you can as well, but please understand that it's champion specific, and if you're going fisting in the river for crabs and you want to really get that skirmish down, then having extra parts is definitely, definitely useful. It's really only great if you know you're not going to fight them, you want to avoid them, and you lose the 1v1. Now, we do have Graves here, teeping back into lane, and this is just basically free gank real estate. I do not know why you would make this play uh, in this exact moment. That's just not respecting lane of timers, and how comes just, Tian's just gonna go, okay, thanks for that one. Olaf is now definitely on the bottom side crab here. We do have uh, pressure in the bottom side. The 215 spawn timers really helping out Hecarim in this case, because now the this is not gonna respawn at four minutes, and this is gonna respawn at four minutes, which means, uh, you know, they actually have to base and think about things. Graves now has TP'd in. We're going to dive this, although we do have to be very careful. The Graves uses his E. We don't really get full damage there on the Q. The Gwen goes deep, gets a kill, first blood secured, and uh, Diana TP's top lane to secure that. The particles are not loading. I apologize for that. It's not my fault. Uh, you can see the TP's and everything on the minimap. It just, it's been doing that for a while. On and off, I don't know. But that's, that's solid. You know, I like it. And, and as we said, Olaf goes back to base. And this here, this ward right here from Hecarim, is why going back for a scanner is good, but it's not always the only way to play the game. And holding onto your control ward for this specific tracking, if the Raptor ward at 121, or, or these early wards to see where they start and you can track their, uh, you know, their, their subsequent process is the, the way to play the game, then um, keeping your trinket and putting it on the second grump if they're just full sequencing is definitely the next biggest one, because if you can't get the first tracking down, you can definitely get the second tracking now, down because we know that Olaf now is Grump Wolves, okay? And we're shadowing mid lane because they're low. This is good, I like this. So instead of going straight for the Grump and sequencing again without thinking, you see bottom lane, they're low, maybe they want to commit, you're still Hecarim with Ghost, we have Conqueror, we can definitely eat and rise TP's mid lane. And now look at the pings from Tian here. Okay, look at the pings from Tian here. He pinged this, okay, you might, maybe you just missed it, that the Olaf would see Hecarim here and then knee jerk to counter jungle this, take this, and then maybe gank this. But he didn't. The Olaf was a little bit too fast and efficient and had done his Raptors already, so it's too late to cut through, which means now Tian has the option to rotate to this situation. Pike doesn't need to go to base. You can see he's watching this. He's looking for it. The Olaf might think, hey, Hecarim's already in Raptors. 
I have a Yumi and the Hakuna goes, come on. Nice hook there. And that should be death. Oh no, it's a Yumi and an Olaf. Okay, there we go. We had to we had to really ground ground the Olaf there with an E. Beautifully done. Excellent. I hope you could follow everything that was going on. Good tracking from Tian. Unfortunately, the Olaf was farming a little too quickly. And because he decided to shadow the bottom lane, he was in a position to cut down and collapse. Could you drag in there? Yes, but you don't really have the, the same sustained damage uh, from your bottom lane. And Pike kind of will want to reset here. You know, he's got low mana, low HP. They can shove this to deny a little bit or just apply a little bit of pressure and then he can reset and now roam. Now laners and junglers need to pay attention to this. Pike's going to go back to base. Hecarim goes topside. Okay. The crab is neutral. It's up. Okay. So so here's... I just, want, I just wanted to reset this up. Instead of focusing on the Olaf, okay, he actually turns onto the Diana. And that's very important because a lot of you will now try and fight the uh, the Olaf who's using this, this Fog of War very, very well, by the way. Something I wanted to point out, which is why I just, I just paused... It went back 10 seconds. Um, but, I mean, you've got Rice here. Instead of being the 2v1, do the 2v1. Yeah, I mean, angles, collapses, smush. There you go. Smush her to death. She flashes, she ults, doesn't matter, she dies. Olaf isn't level 6 yet. We are, which means if we do need it, we can use it. We won't. Smite that to remove the shield. Very fresh. I enjoy. Good stuff. Now, this is the most important thing, right? Because this is your heal. Um, and if that's something rough and you can do more things. And this is a tier 3 Grump about to spawn. We also know that the Gwen is doing okay. She's died, you know, a little bit. We know that he started blue side. So where's Olaf going to go? Is he going to go out of base to the blue side here? Or is he going to go down here to do this and gank this, right? The Pike's Rome Cadence here is good. And the, the Graves heads up play. And his name, <laughs> his name is going to be applicable here. He's thinking, wow, you guys top lane try hiding so much. Great run by the Pike. And this is just understanding of bottom lane as well. The Olaf doesn't understand this. I don't know why. We didn't even have to use our ult. The Graves ults as well over the wall. This is just bad pathing. You know, and that's why I said, is the Olaf going to go top side? Okay, I want my left eye to look that way and my right eye to look that way, but I, I can't do that trick. Don't work for me. Um, <laughs> we're guiding this too much because we're, we're worried about the Diana now at this point. So that reset is very sad. But if Pike goes back here after shoving... And he doesn't show again for some minutes? Where is he? You know? Put this in your calculations. Now, they will kill the Soraka 2v1, which is exactly what you want to do when you can't match their own cadence as a bottom lane. The Pike uses this to create prior from for the rise. And uh, Tian says, well, I'm going to enjoy and snack on all your topside camps, which is exactly what you want to do. And now we can ult and deal with the mid laner because she has no flash. We have our ultimate. Beautiful. Beautifully jung beautiful jungling. And now, again, once more, where is the Olaf going to be? Bottom side, because there's nothing top side. We haven't seen him. He's going red. He will likely look to do the, the Ocean Drake. Uh, we're a little low. He will have ult. We don't want to fight it without our ult. So we're going to go up and do the uh, big, massive Herald. Now, if Olaf decides, I'm going to sequence and collapse on this, which may be the case at this stage, because Graves is showing. So great. Okay, so the Olaf has decided, no, I'm not doing what, what Vakayu thinks I'm doing. I'm going to go and collapse onto this. Oh, no, he is. Or is he not? I have no idea. No, he's on the dragon. Okay, good. <laughs> the, the graves were just misleading me a little bit. But, I mean, oh my goodness, Tian, this is so unfortunate. These are the things I kind of worry about sometimes. You know, if you go to this now, what if the jungler does something random and not as he should do? <laughs> okay, sorry, Ryze. My, sorry, Ryze. <laughs> I think he was kind of war until we had 100% vision on this um, on this Ocean Drake. I don't think he knew exactly where the Olaf might. I mean, we know where he should be, but where is he actually? And and that's the biggest thing about jungling is you guys need to stop treating the map as it should be and start treating the map as it is. And in this case, if Graves moves down playing hyper aggressively and you haven't seen the Olaf, you know maybe he did decide to do this. You have to respect it. You have to respect that possibility. Unfortunately, he overkited it and died, so we lose the dragon, we lose the herald. Um, I got faked out by, <laughs> by this taking so damn long, but you know what, it's fine. TB committed here. Yumi on a Diana. Versus Soraka. Mm-hmm. So Tian decides, okay. In this case, because he took this... Okay, we see this, so this is fine. We can just sequence. The, the Olaf is six... Six. I was going to say six minutes. He's level six in ten minutes. 
Control, baby. I don't like that we're sequencing uh, up here unless we're going to... Um, unless we're going to gain top lane. I think very much the idea here is we want to sequence down and potentially abuse bottom lane. Um, try and anticipate where the, where the Olaf is going to cut in next to use the Herald. So I think if you go this, and just full clear, it can be really, really strong. But if you are kind of worried about uh, matching tempo a little bit, then what you should do is just do red Raptors. Don't go, ra uh, don't do don't go Raptors red, I think. I think that's, that's silly. But if, he, if he's having um, a sort of showmaker moment in <laughs> solo queue, uh, um, and he's maybe maybe he's uh, complaining about the villains on his team here with the Soraka. Then you know who knows. <laughs> but definitely, I think if you're gonna cut the Raptors, uh, sorry, the Krogs to sequence faster down, do so. Here we go, Diana. <laughs> that just instant respect flash. But I am Hekarim with Ghost and Speed and Death. I mean, I just save your flash. It's doomed. And now translate this. See, see this? Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. A lot of you will just go back to Krugs or back to base or, you know, pat yourself on your back. Like a self-flagellating monk from the Middle Ages, as I used in the, one of the videos on the main channel. I like that line. It's a pretty good one. You see? Look at this. And this is exactly what the Olaf did. This is exactly what the Olaf did. But because we ganked mid lane, we created prior for the Rise and the Pike to be able to uh, try and, you know, cut this off a little bit. They're going to use a tower. And what you can do... Just to freeze it, because I'm going quite fast here. What you can do in a doomed scenario where this is just, there's no point rotating, right? People are dead. Um, uh, you know, you're a little bit upset. Then you can always just push this out and just take more plates yourself. So in the case where everyone's dead and you don't really want to rotate to this because you'll die, pushing this, whacking this with your Triforce, getting two plates if you can, and then galloping away up here, um, um, going to hit some uh, stones with a baseball bat, resetting, and then looking to control blue side into dragon. Uh, you can do that. But in this situation, right, this is something we can perhaps do. So let's go for it. We do have ultimate up. We have E available in two seconds. We're going to prime the charges. Uh, the silence does good things here. They're in the fog of war. We do have to be careful. Rise is low. It is a Yumi Olaf. But it doesn't matter when you can do that. I mean, we will die here right if the axe hits. Yeah. So we do die there. Rise is TP. Okay, wait. Okay, good. Woo! That was a little closer, right? and Ryze does use the TP, as I said. That was a little closer um, than I anticipated. But overall, I think it's a good play. Now, Gwen was able to take this because of the top pressure. This is quite a, fana um, fanatic, uh, a frenetic game. Gwen TP's in, no flash on the Dyna, no ult yet, although Graves will rotate. Miss Gwen, Graves will rotate. Okay, we missed this one. Graves will rotate. We hit that one. I got a scratch on my neck. Um, Pike is gonna save the day, perhaps. Gwen is a good design. Yes, very good design. Mm -hmm. Good design. Yes. <laughs> Great design. <sighs> wow. Okay, so normally, if you're not a 200 years, 300 years, 18,000 years champion, uh, you would die there. Yumi shows up once more with the Olaf, which is a very scary combination. Olaf's ult will not be up yet. Pike's gonna yeet away over the wall. Snack the Raptors. Protect your support. Shadow it a little bit. Soraka comes mid lane. Does she really need this? Yes, no. Infuse yourself. We know that they're up here, so let's go take this stuff. They're gonna send four man top lane and kill the Gwen. And Tian's gonna say once more, you're on the wrong side of the map. I'm gonna take your stuff. And you know what? The Rise is gonna be able to get. Let's see. He gets one plate. That's juicy. We can actually go get some more, but I think Rise will get a few here. Yep, two. The Krugs are worth more altogether in terms of denial as well. And now we can float up to the Mountain Dragon. So that's a... I'm not sure that's a worthy play for the Olaf. That's why he's not called Thor. And that's why he's called Olaf. I don't make the rules. Excellent, I like that though. You know, you just protect the pike for the disengage. Um, they go top side, you swoop down, take his whole red side, you take the dragon, you take your whole blue side, if they push mid and you need to cut it with your ult, you can. Ghost activation, E charged, annihilation. The tower dies. So, that, yeah, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Let's just look at that again. So, in theory, yes, this is exactly what we want to do. However, however, you do have to pay attention to the towers and the fact that you have a Soraka and a Pike and Rise isn't here with no TP and Gwen is top with no TP. Here, I think I just want to take this 
uh, and give this, right? But this, in principle, is what we want to do. This is, in principle, what we want to do. Uh, he's trying to knock them back. He's taking way too much of a wind-up to knock them into the tower range to get them to take some aggro. So the tower dies before he gets there. He gets exhausted. Um, the silence from the Sorak is nice, and he's just able to also disengage. And it's very well played by the blue team to sort of group um, to push that. But Gwen's flanking now. And this is where things get miss, uh, missy. I was going to say iffy or missy. But as we can see... Wow. <laughs> Let's watch that again. We weren't even focusing on Hacker Room. Good flank by the Gwen. Overstayed by the blue team. They should have taken the mid and gotten out. Uh, Ryze is going to use his ult to get back in. He uses it with the Hacker Room. The Hacker Room just goes into the back line there. Makes sure Misfortune is taken out of the fight. And then cleans up. Misfortune is obviously... Even though she's 1-4-2. Definitely the back line damage. We don't want to let get away. And Ryze finishes off. Excellent prolonged play. And now look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Pushing the map forward. Everyone's dead. You might think, well, let me fall back to my jungle. No, let's get some vision down. Let's see if they've got a grub we can eat. Let's see if they've got wolves we can eat. Let's eat those. Back to base. Now we can go top side. Uh, there should be a herald spawning that he might that might tickle his fancy. Let's have a look. Raptors, we're going to eat that. Now we're shadowing mid lane. The problem with these kinds of game states is that you don't have these. So you know that they're going to be focused very heavily on this. But you do want to shadow mid because you have no tower. And once more, you have a Soraka. Hawk Stroker. I don't know if that's an inappropriate name or not. Maybe... Maybe she likes to play Quinn? Ah, oh, Control Ward. Tian, Control Ward. It doesn't matter because we have an Omega fight that I'm staring at and watching the Control Ward instead. Rotations, please. Rise flashes up, which is great because you've got the Soraka. And... Oh, that was nice. Good silence. That's what we call biting off way more than you can chew. I want to see the beginning of that fight as well. Sorry for the rewind once more. But uh, Graves is split pushing. I'm sort of looking at names and memeing instead of the game. I apologize. It's kind of getting away from the blue team. So you can see the desperation is starting to settle in. The Graves is now down two levels to the Gwen. These guys, level 9 to uh, level 11 Hecarim, are just going on this. And we can see them rotating. You know, you can see this. So, all in all, it's really, really stupid to be in the river there. It's just bad positioning. And the Olaf has got a Yumi on. He thinks he's just indestructible. Mm, it's not the case. He's just got Disturbs Indestructible playing on loop, and, and, and he's running with it. He's not running with it, he's running it down. It's not right. Hit this again, push the map forward, look at this, we can Shadow the Gwen. Any camps? No, I'm sad. Uh, we do get spotted by the minion wave there, we can put a deep control ward, we can cut this. Maybe set a trap. Dyna splitting the top lane a little bit. Nothing? Fall back to your jungle. Nothing wrong with this. Hopefully you're seeing a heavy... Focus here on, um, heavy focus here on rotations. Very heavy focus here on rotations. Hecarim is the king of being able to sequence like this, counter jungle like this, take objectives like this. Obviously, we had a bit of a, a confusion at the beginning with the dragon and the herald. We definitely should have got some of those. But when it comes to the rest of it, shadowing lane is, rotating, all of this is quintessential Hecarim. And if you're not looking to prime your E, using your ghost and getting into over pushes and split pushes and so on, then you're not doing it right. We did see the Olaf and Yumi here, so we do know they're in the area. We should be cautious for chain axe hits. Um, ult over the wall to get out. Yeah, this is not, I'm not a fan of this power thing at all because we just, we saw them check up and walk back down. Um, and now Gwen is over committing as well. Ryze is teeping into this though. They're actually going to try and call this fight because they do have a decently big lead. By decently big, I mean astronomical. So they can obviously turn these bad situations. But not if people go one at a time and fall in the meantime. The Yumi on the Olaf is just, it's just stupid. Go drink a Yumi Olaf. This is dumb. One man against the world. All right. We take down as many as we can. Waste our time as much as we can. No E available now. Do we have a W proc? We do, but... Won't do anything. Yeah. This, this whole path thing is started by the jungler. So when you are the jungler in this situation, when you are the Hecarim, the FBX TN in this situation, and you see this... Don't go face checking it. Don't instigate this whole event and not have your ultimate in this fight. Uh, yeah, the Gwen's out of position, but we kind of force a chain reaction. And that's that's really something you don't want to do a lot of. And it happens, it happens, it happens. But even with a huge lead like this, uh, Gore Drinker, Yumi, they've got Source Welker on Misfortune. <laughs> Things can happen. Even if you have a better combo, even if you are way ahead, even if you have 10,000 gold lead, 
I mean, it's not 10,000 gold. It was um, like almost 10,000 gold, 9,000. I mean, it's not drastically different. And we are able to still get the dragon, which is a weird thing for me. I do think if you kill everyone, uh, you should get a dragon. I don't know why they didn't. But now Graves is again. Canyon wave on the on the uh, tower. Gwen's going deep. Flash is the ult. Sorak is rotating. Plant is hit. Be cautious here. And once more, Hecarim is in a bit of a position. But you can split and push waves. I think that's very important. If you watch the video on the main channel, the Graves player, pushing the waves whenever there's something happening. Push, rotate, push, rotate, catch, rotate. Uh, it's all within the flow. Raptor's objective. There's always two things going on, uh, going on at once. It's never sort of like one thing happening. Okay, my throat's a little icy because there was a lot of ice in that. <laughs> you know how it be sometimes. Hey, stop watching Mid Beast Rise. Honestly, like he's almost level thirteen as well, which is uh, it's a level up. I want thirteen. I understand you want thirteen. I want thirteen. So here once more, he's pinging it. Graves is bottom lane. He'll have TP. They will track this stuff. Red is going to be respawned. Unfortunately, we can secure that because we don't really have anyone that can use it. He's now not face checking these fog of war uh, areas because we know that they might be trapping. Let's have a cheeky look. They're just they're just floating. They're just floating in the fog of war. Everyone's kind of waiting for the bluff. They see the Gwen's over pushing slightly. This is a good ward. We see it. We know that they're that they are now in that uh, location. Excuse me for miss speaking. Language is hard sometimes, you know. Language is hard. Okay. Graves mid, Misfortune out of position, right flanking. Now we get the ultimate, that is just an instant one shot of the um, Misfortune. Now we're in the middle of the fight and we have basically the Soraka Perma healing. Excellent. This is what we were looking for the first time. A little bit of the pain. <laughs> that, was, that was just like a surprise birthday party, wasn't it? That was just a total surprise birthday party. Now we can Baron. Excellent. So that was way better. You see, this is what he was trying to do here, but he was impatient. And now he was patient, now he was waiting, now he was relaxed. And when him and the Rise, Simpatico, nice flanks together, and they just doom the enemy misfortune for being immobile. You pick this champion with a Yumi, you deserve it. You deserve it. And he agrees in the chat. Take that. Okay, if you have gold amounts that do not amount to a certain... Um, gold amounts that do not amount... If you don't have enough gold for an itemization uh, uh, lift off, a spike, um, take a camp, take two camps, but don't take more than that, you know? You're just looking for the exact gold amount for the item to complete, go back to base, because you, you want to join your team. A Stargazer 7 basically sends... Well, if Stargazer 7's an astrophysicist, then the Dina was the astrologist. Mm-hmm. That's right. Honest. The, the, the delusions of humanity sometimes with this stuff. Anyway, sorry. As, as you all know, that's what I studied, so I, I get really... <laughs> I get really triggered by this stuff. Peeling the backline here is very important. Whether this is a Soraka... <laughs> it's so diseased! All of it is diseased. The Soraka, the Yumi, the Olaf, the Gore Drinker. All of it's just diseased. But whether it's an ADC or, um, or, or a Soraka, whoever the carry is, if they're diving someone that you need to protect, do it, and I said that intentionally, you know, triple C's if you like. Not CCCP, but triple C's. Like... Like, um... Like Arnold Schwarzenegger in the 80s. Any any reference getters. Was it the 80s? I can't remember. Okay. Maybe that was too far of a leap. Gwen is now diving, we have the Baron, and we should be able to tidy this up. But it shows you, very much so, okay? that even with huge leads, games can be thrown. Even with huge leads, people can mess up because they're still people. People are people, whether it's in League of Legends, with the traffic on Monday morning, um, or whether it's astrology, people are people. So dumb things happen all the time. And here's very interesting. Now, someone mentioned in my Discord, oh no, we, we try to end as four, but the one person went dragon in this situation, something similar. Don't force it. If, if, if there's a monkey in your team and he doesn't follow you, don't do something that you need him for and then complain that he's not there. Just fall back, play the safe approach, go back to base. Look, he can very easily now take this crab, take the dragon, the dragoon, okay? Very easy. That's the third one for us. And now we can regroup, take their stuff and push it down. We still have Baron Timer. And now everyone is gathered um, on mass, full mass. 
to do the business. You know, it's much better than trying to force three or four down the mid lane and ending and then throwing because two people didn't join you. Just play around what is, not what should be, to reiterate the message. Okay, over the wall goes Pike. Hecarim is being a bit of a frontliner here. We do have the GA for the, the uh, sorry, the BF for the GA. Stopwatch has already been used. We do have the Death Stance and Shderax. Gwen is once more flanking. Hecarim is going. Ryze is ulting in. Gwen is disrupting. Hecarim charges in, avoids uh, the bullet time. Once more peeling on the um, the Yumi Olaf. Basically, they once they kill that, they can deal with the rest of the team. Oh my goodness, just swiped and murdered. And the Graves as well. There you go. Nicely done. 40 to 15, although it did not feel like 40 to 15 because of the Yumi and the Gore Drinker. But overall, completely our class, obviously. A little bit of spam there. Some good things to learn on. To learn on. Good, <laughs> good things to learn from. I think it's time for uh, it's time for a movie and relaxation. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed and learned something. Please do like, share, and comment if you did. Main channel just got a really good video about uh, Graves, Kindred, Talon, and Kane play if you're interested in that. And as always, I will see you all in the next tutorial.